Hello, and welcome once again to Family Historian. My name is Stephen Conti. Was your ancestor a joiner? Were they members of a club, a society, or a lodge? Well, that will be tonight's topic because we are going to feature the Odd Fellows organization founded in London, England back in the 1730s. And joining me on tonight's show, I am very honored to have as my guest a man named Tom Riley. Tom is a professional historian. He is the author of several books, and he descends from a long line of odd fellows. And on tonight's show, Tom is going to teach us about the various record sources we can use in finding our odd fellow ancestor. And now let's welcome my very fine buddy, Tom Riley. Tom, welcome back to my show. Glad to be back. I know this is your second appearance here because you are so darn smart <laughs> and you are a font of information. Now, tonight's show is very ironic for me, Tom, because by nature I am not a joiner, nor have I ever been. And in my experiences with joining clubs as a boy and as an adult, it was a complete fiasco for me, but that's me. So you won't find my name in any membership role. Now tell me, the Odd Fellows go way back in England in the 1730s. What is the derivation of this society? Well, it goes back to medieval England where each occupation would have a guild. And then within those guilds, there would be journeyman organizations, apprentice organizations, and the Odd Fellows stem from those particular groups. Similar to the Freemasons. Exactly, similar oh. origin. Now, the name Odd Fellow is kind of ambiguous. <laughs> um, what is the derivation of that title? I know when I was a child too, and I, I saw my ancestors were members, it always made me wonder the origin of that name. Mm -hmm. But it's really got two origins, and they're not sure which one is true. The first one was that in these guilds and organizations of occupations, that main occupations like masons and carpenters, and they would have enough members to have their own group. Mm -hmm. Whereas there were a number of smaller trades that didn't have enough members, so they would all join together. And they were referred to as the odd trades. Mm -hmm. So the odd fellows has their origin in this group of smaller organizations and that's where one theory of where the odd fellows came from. I think we get that from odd jobs or Perhaps. something like that. Perhaps. Right. And the other meaning? The other meaning is the one I like because in the 1700s it was uh, unusual for people to care so much about their fellow man. And the purpose of the odd fellows was, and if you, you read their principles, you know, mm -hmm. to help orphans. Uh, the uh, disadvantaged widows, and it was odd for groups of men to care about their fellow human beings as much as they did. Right, and this is reflected in their beautiful motto, those three words. Can you recite those three words for our viewers? Well, their logo, you know, is the three rings, mm -hmm. and with F and L and T. Mm -hmm. And the F is for friendship, the L is for love, and the T is for truth. All odd fellows were obligated to follow those three beliefs. As they are today, we hope. It's the same, right. Okay. Now, the odd fellows uh, came across the ocean to America in the person of a man named Thomas Wildey. Thomas Wildey, okay. Yes. And he was born in 1782. He died in 1861. So he came over here, but you told me that in the early 1800s, there were odd fellow clubs in New York. Correct. So what, what date are we talking about with, with Thomas Wildey? Really by 1821. Mm -hmm. That's when you know, he came and de decided to form a lodge in the United States. The groups in England had formed what they call the, the Manchester Union, mm -hmm. and he was a member of a lodge in England, Oddfellows Lodge, right. that was a member of the Manchester Union. So he 
actually advertised in the newspaper right. for other Englishmen who had been members in, in the old country to form a lodge in Baltimore, Maryland, where he was living. And I think that was in 1819, around that era, yes, around yes. that time. They started advertising then. Right. It, it took them a while to get going. Now we're gonna jump ahead uh, when these lodges and these clubs and these fraternities became very popular. And you gave me the years 1870 to 1910, and you call this what era? They refer to that as the golden age of fraternities, the golden fraternal age. And for instance, in uh, a little town like Butler, would only had a population of, of 3,000. Butler, New Jersey. Butler, New Jersey. Okay. They had 11 different lodges. Mm -hmm. And four of those lodges had women's auxiliaries connected to them. Right. And this is where your great-grandpa comes in because he was an odd fellow and your grandpa was an odd fellow, but not your dad. Not my dad. Okay. So between 1870 and 1910, that was the in thing yes, to and join a, 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 a society. Yes. And when you think about it, you know, there, there wasn't as much entertainment as we have today and the technology certain wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for the brotherhood and camaraderie that a lot of them were Civil War veterans that had experienced in the military. Right. And when they got out, they were looking to form groups where they could experience those same things. Nowadays, we call this male bonding. Yeah, right. Okay. Exactly. That's exactly what it right. was. Because men do have a camaraderie. There you go. Especially if they fought in the war together. Yep. Right. And uh, this is at the same time when men would join things like the Freemasons, uh, the Foresters. What other lodges were there? Um, well, the Red Men was another big lodge. The, the Odd Fellows in Butler, New Jersey, they were the largest. They right. had like 250 members at right. the height. Another major lodge was, was the Red Men. Mm -hmm. And to them, the noble savage was, you know, the ideal. And uh, there were also the patriotic sons of America. Mm -hmm. There were the sons and daughters of liberty. Mm -hmm. There were, uh, you know, even if you include groups like the the uh, Knights of Columbus right. today, that was a similar group. Right. Now, the Odd Fellows, they also had some practical reasons, uh, practical reasons for joining and helping other people. Can you tell our viewers about that? Well, you know, that's where the idea of mutual aid comes in. Mm -hmm. And that's really the main purpose of the Lodge. Like, they're famous for their pa pageants and dressing up and mm -hmm. initiation ceremonies. Right. right. They're famous for, because they were persecuted in England, you know, they had to go underground and they had secret handshakes. You know, that's what a lot of people associate with lodges. Mm -hmm. But the main purpose, especially the Odd Fellows, was health insurance. Yes. You know, only wealthy people could afford, ins afford insurance. If you were a working man, you know, your dues in the Odd Fellows, which were like $8 a year, mm -hmm. would go into a, a fund and if you got ill and you couldn't work, you know, you could collect $5 a week, actually, is what they were given in the 1890s. Right, because the, the, this is because, uh, this is before Social Security and Medicare, as you mentioned. Those safety nets that we have today weren't there, and you could end up, your family could end up destitute. Right. So this was an insurance against that, being a member guaranteed your participation in their social welfare. Very programs. good. And so they did live by those three words. Well, they, you know. A friendship. Love and trust. Right. And we talked about that, you know, before. Yes, yes. Now, let's get to the how-to of finding your odd fellow ancestor. And uh, you have to identify, these things are on the local level. I know today the main office of the Odd Fellows is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. But if you call them looking for an ancestor, they will tell you you have to identify the... Jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. That's a very important word. And that will, that, that's something on the local level. Right. That's really the... the the name of the lodge would be the jurisdiction. For instance, in Butler, it was the Emanuel Lodge Number 8. 
of I the see. Odd Fellows. Now, some of the Odd Fellows will not have a physical building. Like Butler did not have a physical building. Is that correct? You would rent other spaces? Yes, they or? shared a building with the Red Man Lodge. I see. Okay. Now, we do have some uh, uh, physical building photos to show you of the Odd Fellows. Some are very ornate. Some are plain, some are very ornate. And that, those buildings will contain the membership book, which yes. is the meat and potatoes of doing this kind of research. Right. If the lodge still exists, right. they'll have the membership books there. And in, in that jurisdiction? Yes. If not, they might have them at the national headquarters. And they, they're very good when you contact them, mm -hmm. and a lot of the information is online. You can right. get the information you need online. Now, in the case of Butler, New Jersey, where you are a historian, the records that you're going to show us here, now these are currently housed in the... Butler Museum. Butler Museum. So a local historical society or a museum would have it if, yes. if they had a lodge there many years ago. Yes, we have a number of the lodge record books in the museum, which we were lucky. If it's not in a museum or the town doesn't have a museum, mm -hmm. the local library might have them. Okay, or will they still be in possession of an individual, like they a could. secretary? Unfortunately, that's how a lot of them end up disappearing because they're not stored in a public facility. So you were very lucky? Yes. Okay, now we have a few membership uh, books here. And let's start with the first basic one. Okay. Um, if we, this contains your great grandpa, I believe. Yes. Okay. And this is the overall membership log. Okay, and we'll so take a look at those photos, uh, pictures in, rather. Yes, and in this one, they have a general list where they would keep track of who joined, when they joined, mm -hmm. the age, you mm -hmm. know, physical information, the town they belong to. Right. And if they moved away, another lodge that they joined with the same group or if they dropped out or, really? or passed away. It's very concise. It's all listed here. And your great grandpa is listed here. Yes. And there's a lot of local names here. Yeah. You know, Spencer Riley was my great grandfather, but there are a lot of uh, mayors and business leaders. Right. And, you know, the Odd Fellows were the lodge to belong to now, at that time. Now, he was at the time, how old was he at the time that he signed um, up here? He is relatively old, he's 37. You know, a lot of the other members are all in their early 30s or late 20s. And what year is this book from? This is 1896. 1896. So right. we can do the math. That will tell you how old he was, right. and, uh, what and year the, he was born. The Butler Lodge formed in 1884. So he was a charter member. So this is that right. many years later. So this is the basic membership Log. book. Yep. Log, I'm sorry. Correct. Now, what do we have here? It's also a membership book, but uh, different. Right. They really had three different membership books. Mm -hmm. And this one is called The Propositions. And in this book, you had to fill it out, mm -hmm. and you had to have a, a fellow lodge member sponsor you. Right. So you had to be sponsored. You had so to on, be recommended. Yes. Right. Okay. So on one side of this book, is the recommendation information mm -hmm. and the person who is recommending you. Right. On the other side is when it goes to a committee. If you were recommended, it would go to the membership committee and three members would have to approve if you are a member, you know, that would qualify to belong. Right. Do they interview a prospective member? Is that how that would? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think maybe they're taking the word of the person who's recommending you mm -hmm. and then they're taking the word of the committee. I see. You know, and because it's local, a, a lot of people knew They all knew each and, other. Yeah. Okay. And then we have a third membership book here. Yes. And this is the interesting one. It's called Questions. Mm -mm. And every prospective member was asked to fill out this form. Mm -hmm. And again, basic information. And this is a, a major source of genealogical information. Yes. Tell us why, please. Because it's giving you their occupation. It's giving you their age. It's giving you their address. Uh, so that might be thing that might be stuff that you don't you don't necessarily yes. have and right. the, your age at a at a specific year. Okay. Uh, and then there are nine questions that they had to swear to, and I like number seven because number seven is, do you believe in the existence of a supreme intelligent being? And you better say yes. And everybody everybody in this book said yes. Well, you have to, <laughs> I guess, to join the Odd Fellows, right? And 
the same book, you know, later on my grandfather is, is in the same yeah. book. What other kinds of questions would they ask in that book? Okay, well, they're asking, uh, have you have you made application or been a member of any other lodge under the jurisdiction of this group? So mm -hmm. they want to know if you belong to any other lodge. Were you allowed to? Yes, you were. For the Odd Fellows, you could. You could. And we have the Red Men book in the museum, and there are a lot of overlapping names, mm -hmm. members that belong to both. Right. It depends on the lodge. Right. Some lodges don't let you, you know, belong to another. Others will let you be an associate member. You can't be a full member, but you could be an associate member right. of another lodge. Very good. Um, many people don't know that uh, many famous men were members of the Odd Fellows, and I'll just read a few here. Harry S. Truman, everybody's favorite president, I think. Uh, Charlie Chaplin, the great comedian who was born in England, was uh, an odd fellow, I think on screen too. Um, FDR was a member of the Odd Fellows, as was Winston Churchill, whose mother was American born, I believe. And there are many, many other uh, men who have joined the Odd Fellows over the years. Now we have talked about, uh, we're very male chauvinistic here, okay? We haven't forgotten you gals out there because there is a female counterpart of the Odd Fellows. And what are they called? The Rebecca's. And that goes back to the Bible of the story about Rebecca at the well. Mm -hmm. Rebecca shares water with Jesus in the Bible. So the Rebeccas took their name from that person. And they are another charitable organization. Same rules, same group, same ideas, same, probably the same questions they have to swear to. And they were the daughters of Eden, the daughters of Rebecca, Eden Lodge. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, there is an irony about this because the national organization was founded by a man, not a woman, a man in the year 1851, I believe. And who was this man? Schuyler Colfax, who was from Wayne, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And he was actually a vice president of the United States, Daughters of Rebecca. Okay, and your beloved mom was a member? She was, as well as two aunts and a cousin. Right, right. And now, do they have membership books, or do you know where those membership books are? My aunt was the last secretary, and I checked with her daughter. She's gone now, but I checked with her daughter, and nobody has any ideas what happened to the right. book. So it didn't end up in the museum. Right. Now, the Odd Fellows is a, is a worldwide organization. Correct. And there's a recent book that was written by a Filipino Odd Fellow. And we have it with us. Correct. Yes, and he is a member of the Odd Fellows, yep. of course. And he gives not only a history in England and of the United States, but he gives a good history of the worldwide organization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's very popular in places like the Philippines, where he is from. Yes. And Japan, South Korea, you know, Far Eastern countries are involved. And of course, English speaking countries like Australia, New Zealand, they're still very popular. Right. And he claims that they have a, a membership of 600,000 even today. So in Asia, yeah. it's a very popular organization, still. really. And the, the same principles that were established originally are the ones that those lodges are obligated to follow. Are there odd fellows in Eastern Europe? Not that I know of. I, I haven't seen any, any list of any Eastern European countries being Right. Having, having lodges. And there is another book that we have to feature uh, on tonight's show, that big red book, and that goes way back. That, when Eight, was that written? 1888, I believe. And that is, is really a manual of everything Oddfellow that you could think of. The mm -hmm. problem with that book, it's a little hard to read because it was written you know, so long ago. But the, the Philippine book is, is the best one. And that was written around what time? 2017. So that's so the most that's, recent one. Right, that's right, the most right. You also told me a very 
um, interesting story about the Odd Fellows during the Civil War. Can you share that with our viewers? Well, the Civil War, of course, was a disaster not only for the whole country, but especially for groups like the Odd Fellows. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of widows, a lot of uh, orphans to be yes. taken care yes. of at that time. Yes. And at the end of the war, when they, they actually captured Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy. Yes. And he was not being treated very well in prison. Mm -hmm. And he got a new guard. And when he shook hands with the new guard, he gave the odd fellows shake to the guard. And the guard identified himself as an odd fellow. And he said to Jefferson Davis, you know, General Grant is also an odd fellow. So here we see two major figures on each side of the Civil War, both having been odd fellows. You don't know what that, that handshake is, do you? I don't know. Your, your grandpa never taught no, you? No, it's a secret. Really? Yes, they have those. Oh yeah, that was a secret handshake. And, and that goes back to when they were persecuted. Mm -hmm. And that's where all of the secret stuff comes from. Secret signs, secret words, yes. secret handshake, because they were discriminated against and they needed a way to identify each other without speaking out loud. Right. What was the reason for this persecution? Well, in England, you know, the, the king was suspicious of any organized group. Mm -hmm. And because they were well organized, and the, the, you see that the Masons experience some of this today. Yes. The secretive aspect of it, and the fact that they were so well organized, mm -hmm. you know, made them a threat mm -hmm. to the crown. Right. And now these lodges, thank goodness, are multiracial. Years ago, they, there was segregation, of course. Correct. I know the great uh, musician Count Basie, another New Jersey-born man, was a member of the Freemasons, yep. a very active member of the Freemasons. They had black Masons, but now all these men are together, which right. is wonderful. And that's stated in, in the bylaws today, too, how, you know, especially the Odd Fellows are completely uh, open to everyone. Very good. Yes. Very good. And the Odd Fellows had, at the time, they had, you know, independent black Odd Fellow lodges mm -hmm. as well. A lot of them, actually. Yes, yes. Now, um, so getting back to the research, I'll just do a quick review. Identify the location which we call the... the jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. That's the name of the local lodge. And you could even go to the census record to look for your ancestor where uh, they lived, he or she. Or the other way around, the books of the Odd Fellows will tell you what location they were living in. Right. And then uh, you could see if there's a physical building there. And if it still exists. And the records, we hope and pray, will be there which they probably would be. Right, because the main office will not necessarily, the one in Winston-Salem, will not necessarily have these records. Correct, they, they probably would not. I know, because I called them and I was asking a question. They said you have to identify the jurisdiction. jurisdiction right. Okay, well, I think maybe I'll join the Odd Fellows <laughs> after, after tonight's uh, 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 taping. But thank you very much for coming on my show and talking about your ancestors, your odd fellow ancestors. And I don't mean that in a negative, uh, negative way. Uh, I do want to thank Tom Riley, who is a wonderful historian. And the, how many books do you have under your belt now? I'm working on number seven right now. Number seven. Right. Okay. And I forgot to mention that he is also the town historian for Bloomingdale, Passaic County, New Jersey, Correct. and he's also very knowledgeable of Butler, New Jersey, where he spends a lot of time doing research. Because of a mem being a member of the museum. Right. Thank you so much, Tom. Glad to be here, Stephen. Thank you. And on that note, as I have been saying for many, many years, we are all descendants of ancient civilizations. Genealogy is your key to the history of your family. And so until next time, this is Stephen Conti wishing you the very best of luck in your research and above all, happy ancestor hunting. Good night.